Come join Bishop Keith Felton and the Trinity Christian Center family this Sunday for a dynamic worship and praise experience. If you are new to the area or looking for a place of worship this Sunday, we invite you to be part of this life-changing experience. Located at 7935 North Tryon Street, Charlotte, North Carolina. Visit our website at www.tccharlotte.org or call us at 704-905-1371. We look forward to seeing you there. Romans, the fifth chapter, we're going to be starting at the eighth verse. Will you have to say amen? But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, can we say that again? While we were what? Yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to teach primarily from the subject pre-existing conditions. Look at somebody say pre-existing conditions do y'all know what that means amen that means that when God called us he knew everything about us that was not right about us but yet he he God died for us anyway and and when God gave me this message he gave me this I heard an insurance uh, um, uh, broadcast and it was deliberating on the news about insurance companies as well as life insurance companies did not want to take people in because they had cancer already. That means that if you had a terminal disease already they didn't want to give you a policy because they already knew that you were going to die. Basically you would cost them more money for you to be on their policy than it is for you to just stay where you're at. Amen. And I begin to understand the gravity of what people don't want anything to do with you if they can find out if something's wrong with you. God is the exact opposite. God knows everything that's wrong with us, yet still in his infinite wisdom, he still wants something to do with us. Don't you kid yourself. The person that's sitting in front of you, beside you, or behind you have a condition in them that was in them before they got saved. It was something about you that you didn't like that you said, God, help me to take this thing away from me. But even when God knew this before he pulled you into his will, he did not listen. He did not prejudge you. He did not look at you funny. He said, you know what? Your condition is not going to eliminate me from using you. That's why in the body of Christ, our praise and our worship has to be curtailed for God and God alone through Christ Jesus. Because he is the only one that knows everything about you. And not judge you against what you're doing. He can remind you and say, my daughter, my son, it's time for you to let this go. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to mature. But even in your struggle, God said, I have not eliminated you from my will because I know what's wrong for, with you. The Bible says in the book of Romans that even while we were yet sinners... Even while we wouldn't even, even worthy to be called a child of God, God said, I knew your conditions. I knew your condition when you grew up as a little boy, a little girl. I knew your conditions. I knew all the mistakes that you would make before you even make the mistakes. But my will over your life is more powerful than the thing that you've done in your life. Because if the thing that you've done in your life was more powerful than me, then it would be God. Yes, Are y'all with me this morning? That means that I come to encourage somebody. When we come before God, you have to understand that, God, I thank you for knowing everything about me and not shunning me away. I thank you that my pre-existing condition, it might be that I came out of a life of poverty. I might came out of a life of being in the penal system. I might have a baby out of wedlock. I might been did this and did that. God said, I knew all this about you, but what you've done does not disqualify you. Oh, my goodness. Don't bring me too fast because I want to talk a little bit. Because if I go there, I'll follow you. Amen. I believe with all my heart that we as a body of believers and men and women of God, we should begin to thank God so much more for using us when we know we're not usable. Tell somebody, say, I'm not usable. The moment when you think you're usable, then that's when you're not usable because the Bible says he resists the pride, but he gives grace to the humble. You're sitting here right now with your communication with God and we all know that we're not living like we know we could live even at the best days that we still fall short of the glory. But the amazing part is that God know what we're going to do before we even do it but he still blesses us. He still wakes us up in the morning. He still pushes us on our way because he never allows what we deal with before we met him get in the way of what he's doing with us right now. And if I had time, I could go in a little bit deeper about our mess. Somebody say, my mess. 
I'm not, the, I'm not talking about the mess you see in everybody else's life. I'm talking about the mess you have created while you were yet serving the Lord. Now, we like to talk about the, 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 the pre-kicking up before we met the Lord. But how many of y'all know that y'all made, we all made some mistakes while we were yet serving the Lord? Why were we yet calling on the name of the Lord? Why were we yet trying to fast and plead the blood of Jesus? While we were laying prostrate in our living rooms and going to work and asking God to make a better day? And God said, I know all about that, but the amazing part is I know your flaws, yet still I'm still faithful. I know your inconsistencies, but I'm still faithful. Oh, y'all got to get this right here. I know that even while you're not even worthy for me to bless you, I don't use your pre-existing condition to eliminate you from my will. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. Tell somebody that he knew you. And I think that's what gets us as the body of believers is this. What we know about ourselves placed in God and we say, God, you know what I'm dealing with right now. I can understand if you wouldn't bless me. God, I keep right on messing up and doing the same old thing. God, I'm slipping and I'm doing things I ain't got no business doing. And if it were you, God, if I were you, I wouldn't bless me. And God said, that's the problem is this. You're not me. I see something in you that you don't see in yourself. We, we as mankind, we would disqualify ourselves before we qualify ourselves because we see the manner of man or woman that we are. I want you to look at somebody and say, you know who you are. You know exactly who you are. You know exactly. You're not shouting and speaking in tongues and rolling through your scriptures during Monday through Saturday. Sometimes you find yourself saying, Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy upon my soul. But God said, I don't look at what frustrates you. I look at the faithfulness that I have towards you that even while you're sinning, even while you come short of the glory, I have not disqualified you. What mistake can you make that make God push you out of his will? God said, if I call you, I already know what I called. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? One of the things I've learned is this. I never forget, I, I was in the pawn shop. You know, that's my, that's my Walmart. I like to go to the pawn shop. Everybody got their little thing, amen. And God began to deal with me as I was in the pawn shop. He said this, everything that you get ready to see in this pawn shop, someone owned it before. Oh, y'all got to get this right here. Someone owned it before. You're not getting anything new. You're getting something that somebody's hands has already been on. But when you buy it, when you purchase it, you will love it and you will cling to it as if it was new because it's new to you. Whether it be a DVD player, whether it be a saw, whether it be something, that in the pawn shop has already been touched. It has already been occupied. It had already been used. And God began to share with me that I use people that don't come out of the world system. You've already been depleted. Some of y'all been lied on. Some of y'all been cheated on. Some of y'all been led astray. Some of y'all did things that you say, God, how in the world did I get here? And God say, knowing all of this about you, I still want something to do with you. And if that don't make you happy, if that don't bring a joyness over your spirit, then I'm glad to be in the kingdom of God. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be called out. I'm glad to be a part of the body of Christ. That God knows who had their hands on me. That he knows what manner of thing that I did when I was in the club. He knows what I was doing when this, that, and the other. But he did not push me away. He knew who I was. But he used me right where I am. Lord have mercy. Are y'all getting anything out of this? I know it's hot and I'm trying to move on. This is, this is the zenith of us as men and women of God. That when we come to church, we must come to church with a mindset of this. I know who I am. It doesn't matter who's here or not here. Look at somebody and say, I know who I am. I know that I love the Lord, but my life don't look like it from time to time. I know that my mind is supposed to be stayed on him, but my mind is not always stayed on him. Now, if y'all come here for me to fluff you up this morning, you can forget about that. Y'all already know I'm going to bring the pure truth. No chaser, baby. This is it right here. I'm not talking to a fluffy Christian. Or fluff. I'm talking to men and women that the reason why they're praising God the way they praise God because they say things they ain't got no business saying. And they, their mind wonders in areas they ain't got no business wondering. Their heart loves them, but God said, I know who you are. And what should make the caliber of worship in the body of Christ is this. That we're doing everything else that somebody else could do, but Christ didn't disqualify us from doing it. Somebody's got to get that right there. So what are you saying, Bishop? I'm, pitching, I'm preaching to ordinary people. 
I'm not preaching to people that's walking on clouds and surfing in on the wind. I'm preaching to ordinary people that know things about themselves and they beat themselves over the head vehemently because they feel like God doesn't want to use them. God said, I knew your hang up before I hung up. I knew who you were before your mama named you. I know who you, I'm dealing with. I, I am God and beside me there is no other. Tell somebody, say, do you know who you're dealing with? Oh my goodness. I'm getting too happy. It's too hot. Amen. God said, I know exactly when you were going to have that baby. I knew exactly when you were going to go to jail. I knew exactly when you had to do things by yourself. And I knew all of this about you. In fact, I had to create you before you could live life. Mm. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to get back to this. He said, he told Jeremiah, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. Oh, my goodness. Somebody say, knew that means he had a relationship with you that he's seen the span of your life. Not from the beginning to the end, but from the end to the beginning. He knew how it would end. He knew how you would be birthed. He knew if you would come through a single parent home. He knew if you had mother and father. He knew if you had to go through tumultuous times in your life. He knew if you came up on a wing and a prayer. He knew if you had to be placed in foster system because he strategically put it there for his glory. And God said, now the thing that you're doing in your life right now, because you know in your spirit that God does not like ugly. <laughs> Is anybody in the building? The thing that's harboring all of our spirits that I love the Lord, but there's some things still in me. God say those things was in you before you recognize these things was in you. The blood, the glory of it that God say I seen the thing in you, but I never stop you from preaching. I never stop you from singing. I never stop you from being a blessing or receiving a blessing. Somebody's got to get this. I, I don't know who this is for, and we have to cling to change the climate of how we worship God. Is that we're here right? Right now because it's not no goodness of our own it is God looking past our faults I don't care if it is hot I'm gonna preach myself happy it's God looking back the reason why you're sitting here right now God said I know all your hookups I know all your mistakes I know you're still cussing and I know you're still slipping and dipping but you gotta thank God that he woke you up this morning and say get it right thank God that he said you can do better today than what you did yesterday somebody gotta say thank God tell somebody say thank God Thank God that even he knows about us, but he's still blessing us as if we ain't did anything wrong, but you know the truth. That's why we come through these doors. That's why we come through these gates. We have to come with thanksgiving in our hearts because we know the truth. Tell somebody, say, I know the truth. That's why I can't be on the service when people act like they're all deep. I can't do it to him because all have sinned and come short of the glory. I don't like to be in the service where people say, why do you got to do that? People are worshiping, shaking out their perm, they're sweating up their suit because they understand that man, if you only knew the man or woman, a man that I am, that I can still feel his spirit even when I wasn't faithful to his will. Does anybody know? You got to have go there before to understand what I'm talking about. Does anybody know that say that know what it feels like when you're out of the will of God, but he's still talking to you to bring you in when he's not happy with what you're doing because he said, I know you're not happy, but I still love you. I I still want to do something to do with you. I still want to bless you beyond your day. And God said, that's where the praise has to come in. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of your way. Most of us, if we know something about somebody, we don't want nothing to do with them. I heard so-and-so was coming to your house. So-and-so? And so, ain't that so-and-so boy? Yeah, he ain't coming over here. I heard about him. Ain't that Mary Sue and Jimmy Lee boy? Yeah. Tell him he can stay right where he's at. I heard what he did when they went over to Martha them house. Y'all laughing because y'all done said it or y'all done been around it. Well, tell them to call me before they come because you have to monitor. Believe it or not, your personality supersedes the person. People will hear about you before they meet you. And do you not realize that there are pre-existing conditions that we do in our own lives that disqualify us? And even as human beings, if you know somebody that had a rap sheet, you don't too much want anything to do with them. If I had a business and I was operating with money and somebody came to me and said, well, what's your background? Is I robbed banks. I got, I, got, I got incarcerated for robbing banks. 
Now, instantaneously, uh, I would say this. Uh, we're not going to be able to use you. <laughs> I mean, just as spiritual and diplomatic, we're not going to be able to use it. The, the position is already closed, and the position can be wide open. But based on the resume of life, because all a resume, whether it be in life or in a piece of paper, it gets the employee or the person a general idea of what you did before you met them. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's amazing to me that God calls us. He did, we didn't call ourselves. God, look at somebody say, God called me. And when you, when, you, when you really embrace that, you begin to understand the gravity of what you do. So that if you're preaching and if you're in ministry, you do it with such a love and a sold outness that God called me. If you're in any level of ministry, you'd be so thankful that God called you. It's amazing that God said, I know your rap sheet. I know what you've done before you met me. I know how much you cussed and kick up. I know how much you had sex from doorpost to doorpost. I know all these things. I know how much dope you smoke. How much dope you smoke. I know how much liquor you drank. God said, I see the resume of your life. But still, God said, the opening is still yours if you want it. Tell somebody say, that's God right there. God can know everything about you wrong and still give you the job. That's why we can't come in here like we owe the world anything. We owe it to God that how could God know all this stuff about me how could God know that I had sex before I got married how could God know that I did this before I did that and God said how do you, why do you still want me God said because your pre-existing conditions has nothing to do with my will over your life mm. is anybody in the big are y'all getting anything out of this who you were before you met Christ didn't disqualify from Christ using you. Everybody in the Bible had a rap sheet. Noah was an alcoholic. Ooh. Abraham lied. David loved women. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? There's no perfect person that you, you read about, you study about. When you study about all the patriarchs and matriarchs in the Bible, they were men just and women just like you and me. Peter had an anger problem. Moses had an anger problem everyday people and you begin to understand and say God I, I, I thank you for giving me life health and strength but most of all I thank you for knowing everything about me let me, let me, let me take it back God seen the struggle before it became a struggle See, what are you struggling with right now? He's already seen it. And he could have said, you know what? I see her struggling with this. I see him struggling with this. Even before they're born, I see their life. And this is amazing. God said, even though I see her and him struggling with this, I'm going to raise them up. I see them struggling with what they struggle with. I am still going to use them. And this, don't, this message doesn't make any sense if you have not done anything wrong. It, it, it doesn't make any sense now if you just got saved. It really doesn't make any sense yet, but I'm talking to men and women that love the Lord, but you've done some things and you allow things to come in your life that jeopardizes the will of God over your life. And you ask God within yourself, God, forgive me. Have mercy on my soul. God say, what you believe in me for, I seen before you was in your mother's womb. And the problem is this, that God said, people want me to People want to thank me for bringing them out of the problem, but the whole gist of it, if you want to look at it realistically, we got to thank God for pulling us in the promise even while we're dealing with problems. Because as sure as I'm teaching and preaching to you right now, you are going home to a problem externally or internally. And I don't care how much you say, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. There's something that even you are going to question yourself and say, God, you got to help me get through this. God say, I put you in it. I put you in it. You, yes, I'm helping you get out of it because I put you in it. I knew what you needed before you even needed it. And your condition does not have a thing to do with God's promises over your life. Mm. Look at somebody say it was there. I, 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 I'm starting to believe and I'm starting to understand the disqualification process that God loves us all. Man disqualifies you based upon what you can do for them. 
but God never disqualifies us. And this message might be for one, out of all these people, it might be for one or two people for them to understand this. It looks bad now, but God still loves you. It looks like it's not lining up right now. Look at somebody say, look bad right now. But God still loves you. Sometimes you can say, forget about the promises. Forget about the houses and land. I just need to know that he still knows my name. Like the song said, he knows my name. Tell somebody, say, he still knows your name. He knows what you're crying over. He knows what's trying to cripple you. He knows the strongholds that you're dealing with in your life. But he still knows your name. That if you come down and fall prostrate and call on the name of the Lord Jesus, he will save, he will restore, and you got to thank God for that. Amen. The only people that would not thank God for that are pious and pride people that say, ain't nothing wrong with me. The devil is a liar. When you get to the point that you feel like there's nothing wrong with you, you're not usable. But when God understands this, when you can come to the realization that every day you wake up in the morning, the same thing that you didn't get to the bottom of yesterday is still there, but God still woke you up. Somebody's got to get that. The power of going to bed at night undone and waking you back up. That he could have took you while you were not saved or not delivered. He could have took you while you got drunk. He could have took you while you had one more blood. He could have took you all that. But God said, ah! Woke you up this morning. Even knowing what you did the yesterday. And your relationship with God becomes a little bit more intact. That how can you know all these things about me? still bless me how could you know that I'm still struggling and still bless me how could you know that I'm, I'm feverish and I'm, I'm stumbling over some things and still bless me God said because these conditions were in you before the foundations of the world God allows certain things to be in your life to draw you closer to him the songwriter said, if I didn't have a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know the things that he could do. Tell somebody to say, through it all. Through everything, through what people see and what people don't see, you're learning to trust in Jesus, even out of the condition that you didn't ask for, even out of the pre-existing problem that was there before you got saved. I don't know if the heat drained y'all today, but maybe, maybe it has. But I'm going to still right on preach. Amen. Amen. Because, because when God has taken this ministry and when God has taken us as a people, we have to, we got to get back to the individual walk with God. I can't get off this point and I'm going I'm to I'm move on. Look at somebody say, I know the truth. You know the truth. You know and I know. If God was looking at our conditions... He would have every right to say, I'm not using her. I'm not using him. Whew. You know God has every right to say, you know what? They, 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 they say they say, but they're still dabbling in the world. I, I'm not using them. She talking about she loved the Lord. He talking about he loved the Lord, but you don't know if they save or not save. And God say, hey, man looks at us that we won't use them. But when we can understand the gravity of God, that God loves us. And this is not a license for us to take what that thing that is undone to get out here seeing and keep up doing what he know that this message is not for that. Amen. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin and let that grace may abound? God forbid. If you are sinning, if you're constantly, habitually sinning, you need to be delivered. But this message is for that man or woman of God who is struggling present day. You have to understand that God knew your condition before he called you in ministry. Before he called you into another level of living. He knows who you are. He knows you by name. He knows your structure. He knows the hash that are numbered on your head. So it should make serving the Lord a little bit better to know that all this stuff wrong about me. You still like me. You still love me. God said I look past your fault. Amen. I can't preach it like I feel it, but I got to talk it. Amen. Because I'm excited to know that I know who I am and God still loves me. 
maybe this is not a shout message. Maybe this is a message that you resonate in your spirit that I'm all jacked up no matter how pretty I look, no matter how handsome I look, no matter what I drive, I'm still jacked up. I'm not ready to die, but I'm not fit to live. When you understand the gravity of God's love, that and some days if you don't like you and God's still loving you, no matter who's in the church, you will lift up your eyes to the hills from us, come as your help. All of your help comes from the Lord. Does anybody know what it feels like when your life is backwards and your finances is going in the gutter in the mud? But God said, that does not change the way I feel about you. In the body of Christ, we've getting so deep. We're getting so deep, but we're not reaching everyday people. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There are people that have come through some things in this thing called life. There are people that have been molested, been raped, has been, been turned out. There are people that have been going through things and they want God to use them. There are people that grew up in abject poverty and never had anything to say that was there. There are so many different listen the issues that's in the sanctuary and across the nation. And we got to understand to let those men and women know that no matter what we've gone through, he already knew what we went through before we went through it. And the glory is this. I got stained with what I went through but it didn't change the way he feels about me when you think about if we just rewind somebody say rewind if you rewind 90% of who you are today is based upon why, how you grew up or oh, you're hearing what I'm saying I, I, my kids sometimes they finicky about eating but that's just the way they grew up when I was growing up, we, we couldn't be finicky. You had to eat what was what set before you. I don't care if it was pig feet boiled all day long with Texas pig and, 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 and apple cider vinegar. Somebody know what I'm talking about. We sucked those pig feet off the bone teller with none of my knuckles left. Is anybody in the building? Everybody talking, y'all, y'all die, stop acting like you're so deep, amen. We know how it is to fry bologna until it burnt and it bubble up. And you got to put a little triangle on the side of it to keep it from, and we ate it with mustard, pork, and beans, and rice. Mm. Mm. I don't know when I start talking about food, y'all got happy. It's a food spirit in here. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? We, we learn to operate in every kind of condition. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? My son said, Dad, it's hot in here. Turn the thermostat down. We didn't have thermostats. We had a fan with no front in it in the window blowing out the cold air in the house. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. It was never silent. Vangie McGuffin was never silent. It was always woo, 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 woo. And you know not to stick your hands in it because back then everything was made out of metal. Somebody say every condition. But no matter. Now, if God was picking people, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of your way. If God was picking people based upon how they came up and their family and their pedigree, we wouldn't be written. We, we couldn't be used. If God said, I'm only blessing those and pulling those in who was born with a mother and father in their house and got the structure from their daddy, some of us wouldn't be used. I'm only using those ones who are fluent and, 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 and they went to the greatest Ivy League colleges and I'm only using the women that kept themselves until marriage and they didn't have a baby out of well. I'm only using those brothers that didn't go to prison, that didn't do great crime, or didn't do all this bad thing. God said, if, if it was based upon where we come out of, we would not be used. And the church don't preach like this for fear. Oh no, we don't want to do that right now. Because no, 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 no. Everybody under the sound of our voice has done something. Look at somebody and say, you've done something. And the amazing part is there's something that you've done that's not disqualified from the salvation that you have now. That God said even while you was in sin, even while you was yet in sin, even while you was pushing that baby out and you didn't know where the daddy was, even while you was incarcerated trying to write letters to your family, even while you was making a mess out of your life, even God said, I still, I still died for you. I still got a plan for you. I, when man gives up on you, God say, that's when I get warm. I, when all hell breaks loose, I, that's when I step in like a flood. I, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God say, that's when I raise the standards over your life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If it was based upon how we come up, I wouldn't even be up here qualified to preach to you right now. Can I, can I get a witness? But God say, I knew your condition. And I knew what your condition would make you do. Everybody is in something that's making them try to do something that they know they're not accustomed to doing. 
You could be pushed and pressured by life. You're getting quiet in here now. You can be pushed and pressured by life. But I hear God saying this morning, your condition was there before you even confess me as Lord and Savior. The powerful part is this. I knew all about you. And I never discredit who you were. I'm going to say that one more time. If man knows a little bit about you, they don't want anything to do with you. But let's take off this church face. Let's take off titles and all this stuff that makes us, that, that makes us miss the mark of the high calling. Let's take off the title of bishop and elder to minister and evangelist. Let's just take off all this stuff. Let's take off the title of saints of God. Let's take off and strip us down to our least common denominator. And when you do that, we're all seeking at the feet of God for mercy over our souls. Because a title can't get me to heaven. A title can't heal my body. A title can't, I can't touch a title and watch things come up. God said, you got to thank God that I know everything about you. And I still call you. I don't, under, I, don't, I don't understand that in the body of Christ how we can be so nonchalant about us. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen to this. Listen. We can be so loose and nonchalant about us until we forget that we are still a work in process. And I'm going to say this and somebody's got to get this. God said, I know everything about you. Yes. And you know the things about you that if, if I were to reveal them to my people, you're not that such and such. And God said, he began to share with me and say, if I begin to reveal to everyone about everyone else, the people wouldn't come to church because it'd be shame. Because I don't want people to know that I still struggle like I struggle. Because the image in the house of God has become more powerful than the anointing. I'd rather look like I got it together than be anointed to have it together. I'd rather have a nice suit, a nice cloth, a nice this, a nice dress, a nice this, and not be saved and have a form of godliness. And God said, but if I strip you down and let everybody see who you are, then you will worship me and a lover that you've never worshipped me before. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Well, make it plain. God said, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? And ignore the moat in your own. And I want to say this on one accord. Look at somebody. Look him in the eyes and say, you jacked up. <laughs> and nobody want to hear that right now because we're thinking, oh, I'm all right. No, you're not. But for the grace of God, we will be right back where we started from. It, evil, it evens out the playing field. That the person is sitting beside you, they ain't no different than that man or woman that's out there on the streets right now. It's just that we have Jesus Christ in our hearts. And I say this in my conclusion. Begin to thank God for him knowing about you, the secret you. The you that you don't want nobody to know about. An ongoing struggle with you. And he's still calling you by name. Can I get a witness? Have you ever had something going on in you? I remember when I was growing up, hey man, mama used to, the kitchen was the big thing. If you didn't clean up the kitchen, you might as well have been beat with many lashes, you know? I mean, my God, you crucified, raised them up. Because she could hide everything else. It was the kitchen in the bathroom, but the kitchen, now listen to this, the kitchen more so than ever, because mama said, that's where everybody gonna see when they walk in. And I remember one time, I, I, I was supposed to clean the kitchen. And I got caught up playing basketball at the center, community center. And as I was making a free throw, I seen mama car go by. I stopped immediately in, in, in the middle of the game and ran home. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? It just so happened that at the time, my mother stopped to my grandma Ovella's house. It bought me about 15, 20 minutes. So when I get in the house, I'm putting dishes down and covering them up with the cloth. 
Y'all done it before. Stop acting crazy. And just hoping that when mama walked through, she set things down and it looked like it's clean. See, see, when you're hiding stuff, you know how to make it look like it. <laughs> I won't even go in there. See, when you save and you're hiding stuff, you try to make everything look like it's clean, but you know it ain't clean. So I got all the things that I know she would look for. And the one thing, somebody said the one thing. One thing but I know about my mother is this. She'll look at the cook stove. And if she sees stuff on the cook stove, y'all remember they called the eyes or the burners? That was a pet peeve. Nobody ain't clean this kitchen up. Brother Moore, I was just hoping mama didn't see it. I was just, I was just hoping that she didn't see it. I covered, enough, I covered it up enough to give her the illusion that it was clean. But down in my spirit, I know I hadn't done my job. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know who this is for. Right now in the body of Christ, we're covering up just enough to look at us so other people can think we're clean. We're covering up just enough to get the approval of our brothers and sisters that you're a woman of God, you're a man of God. But they don't know that you're just covering up enough to get by because you're not really clean as you say you are. They don't know that you're running home before God gets there and covering up your dishes and trying to make like things is all right because you know in your, your spirit you're not doing what you're supposed to do but you're covering enough enough to get accolades from your brothers and your sisters. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Just because I wear a collar, just because we sing, just because we play instruments, just because we work on the, on the south, just because we do all these things, we could be just covering up to look like we're clean in front of everybody else. But let somebody say, God knows. God said, you, we're coming to church and we're just covering up enough to look clean because public admiration has become more powerful than getting right before God. Listen, I want to share this with you. If you are a man or woman of God and someone says, oh, you're so anointed and you're so this and you're so that. You should just ignore that. <laughs> you should ignore it and say, to God be the glory. And keep right on walking. <laughs> you'll get more respect from God than, than you ever imagined. Why? Because you'll be like, Peter, do you know what man of man that I am? As long as we know individually who we are, it's the moment you forget who you are. You begin, begin, you begin to become judgmental of others. When people say, oh, Bishop, that was a stirring word. To God be the glory. I walk off. But in my spirit, I already know who I am. To God be the glory. But walk away and say, God, if they only knew. Tim, you did an awesome job on this drum. Dallin, and Diane, y'all doing good. But you got to have in the back of your spirit. To God be the glory. Because if, it, if, if, if you only knew. <laughs> is this too real with y'all? See, this is what church is supposed to be. Everybody walking around with titles and we walk around and just, we hobo and cobo and just is jacked up. And, but you know what we'll do? We'll cover up good enough. We'll cover up good enough. And God say, do you not know what you're covering, what you're hiding? I see it. I see your condition. And you mean to tell me you got more fear of what man might say about you? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because no matter how much we worship with each other, you don't know my condition. Tell somebody say, you don't know it. The only way you'll know my condition if I got exposed. <laughs> How could all these preachers be sleeping with these girls and these men? Da, 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 da? Because it was always there. They just got to... Ex- oh, y'all can't handle this right here. Because everybody under the sound of my voice, if it had not been for God, the problem is this, and this is the glory that I get. I say, even though these men and women come short of the glory and they were exposed, but look at the fact that God knew all about them and kept using them. That is the miracle. 
that he kept using them and wooing them for repentance and using them. You can be prominent in preaching and still struggle secretly. And the problem is this. is not that you struggle. It's that God wakes us up every morning and use them. It's in the body in the building. It's like a mother or father or if you're watching your, your nephews or your nieces, listen, and you know they're lying to you. Stand right here. And they operating with you. And you know they're lying to you. Did you take that money off my dress, dresser? No. I don't know you got a camera. You don't rewind the camera in the room and say she took it. And, and, and they're just operating. So how you doing today, Auntie? Huh? Yeah, yeah. But, she, but I don't know that I know. She don't know that I know. Um, let's put it like this. I don't know that she know that I took her money. And I'm lying. But I'm telling her how pretty she is. I mean, Auntie, you look so good today. Let's, 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 let's bring it to the spiritual. We're robbing God. We're we, 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 we catering our life to get accolades from others. Uh, a preacher, stand right here. Brother Moore, stand right I need you. I need you to preach. Just stand right there. He represents the crowd. As long as he keeps calling me what I want him to call me, I'm good. And I get off on that. I get a certain high. I mean, you're anointed. And, da, 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 and I get off of it. And God said, but you lying to me. How could you be so caught up in what people think about you to protect your image? And I see you. I see your condition. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You may be seated. Do you know that there's people, somebody say in the church, there's people in the church that's operating in ministry that's still watching pornography. But they come to church and look all sharp and clean, but you don't know. That's their condition. Do you not know that men and women all across the body of Christ that love the Lord, but they go home and they argue and they fuss, and it's like Tom and Jerry that's on this. But when they get together, oh, it's so good to see you this morning. You are so pretty. Look at you. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And God said, You mean to tell me you would rather look good for man? And I see your pre existing condition thought this thing would make us closer but it evidently is making you more arrogant tell somebody say I got away with it when I was growing up the, the majority and I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of your way Minister Hunter the majority of my beatings because we didn't call them spankings back in the days put that on Facebook we got beat can I get a witness 85 to 90 percent of my beatings came when I was in church. Can I get a witness? That's a high percentage. And some days we would come from church, and I'd be just hoping Mama forgot. Tim, I walk in the house, and I, you know how you sit there for a little while. Then Mama been talking all along. She forgot, cause Mama tell you when you, I'm gonna give you a beating when you get home. I'm saying this, I'm going to promise you I'm going to get out of your way. I'm, 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 I'm going to give you a beating. And Lord knows, don't let us say, I'm going to tell Rudolph when we get to the house. There's nobody interceding for me anymore. And, and, and in the course of her moving to and fro from church to singing on the praise team to dealing with us as kids, and da, 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 I was hoping, Elder Road, I'll be hoping she forget. But y'all know country mamas don't forget anything. Mom could be, she could be walking to her, say, how y'all doing in that shape, man? Yeah, right. and Keith, remember what I told you? Yeah, and you're like, that's it right there. Amen. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Bring it back to remembrance. God said, no matter how busy we get, always remember, thank him for not chastising us when he could have chastised us for doing things that, sh that, that Christians should not do. Thank God that he didn't chastise us when he could have chastised us when we was doing things that were questionable. Thank God that he didn't thank God that he didn't chastise me in the middle of me doing what I'm not supposed to be doing. Thank God that he looked past my faults. Come on, stand to your feet. You have to grasp this. While you're in the middle of doing something while you're saved, 
why you love the Lord and you say, God, I shouldn't be doing this. Thank God that he didn't judge you, that he didn't beat you with many lashes instantly. Hallelujah. The thief on the cross between two thieves. The one said, I'm a, I'm a thief. I'm supposed to be here. But this man did no wrong. And he said this with, with the last weaning breath out of his body. He said, remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. Sometimes your situation, if you don't want to change, will bring you to the point of you losing everything. For you to say, God, have mercy on my soul. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, y'all. Before I leave this podium, before we even move into communion, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that say, God, I want to, it's a condition that I have. I, I'm asking you, I, I need to rededicate my life to you. Come, come, the altar is open. What good is you hearing a message like this and not let it convict you to do better by God? Some of y'all need to renounce certain conditions in your life. Mm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I was graced to attend a funeral of a young man that was 28 years old yesterday. And I asked myself as I was standing, I said, God, God bless you, my sister. Come forward, come forward, amen. I asked, I said, God, this man was so young. God said, he was not as young as you think he was. Because God sees things from a different perspective. Listen to this. There are two types of people. There are people that die because their work is finished. Excuse me, there are two types of people. There are people that are alive because their work is not finished. And there's people that die because their work is finished. And the greatest work, and we have been so, the body crash has been so thrown off track. But I want to share this with you. The greatest work. God bless you. God bless you. Come up. Amen. It's another soul that wants to be saved. Amen. Amen. Young man, God bless you. The greatest work that you could ever do is getting your soul right before God. What good is you living 90 years and never knew God? What, you, what good is you coming to church and see all these people who are worshiping the Lord, but you so in yourself that says, nothing wrong with me. When we all should say, God, have mercy on my soul. There's men and women out here in the body of Christ that can't stop having sex. Sex, sex, sex. They can't stop doing the thing that they say they wouldn't deliver, they did, was delivered from. And you say, well, Bishop, why would you bring that up? Because even while they're operating in their it, it pre-existing condition, God still loves them, but he's loving them enough to get right. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. See, they're not used to this kind of preaching, Bishop. I know Holy Spirit, but I'm going to keep right on preaching. There are people in the body. The body of Christ is suffering more than the world. Because we're bringing things in the church that ought not to be. And think that God is going to overlook it. But God said, mm, nah, it's not going to happen. And we have got to be true to ourselves. Before, I, before we do the prayer of salvation, look at somebody where you're sitting and say, he knows all about me. He knows my condition. But he still loves me. Now put your hands together. So much for tuning into this message. No matter if it's by radio or by television broadcast, we want to thank you. Please stay tuned with us online at TCC Charlotte and all social media platforms. That's Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We look forward to connecting with you soon. And God bless.